1943, when all this happened, it was about the darkest time for Northern Norway during the war. And suddenly a boat is coming in from, from England with Norwegian soldiers on board. And that was an inspiration for the people up here. Because now they knew they were not forgotten. Because they thought they were. The first person I met in 95 who helped Jan was Dagmar Idrupsen. Today, we still are able to listen to Dagmar's story. And I was going to say that he was the revolver in the gun. So I was going to say that he was going to be fine. So. He said that he was going to be fine. He could not be fine. He could not be fine. He could not be fine. Vi kom så väst, visste ju inte det. Det var ju ingen som väste där. Vi trodde ju att det var brodern, han Peder, för han var ju och fäska. Men det var ju bara för det att väst tysker kom. Ja. Så, så måste de säga att de hade truat det. Ja. Och det var väl inte att komma ut av folk väste det. Ja. De kunde snart ha kommit. His journey went all through Troms to Sweden. It took him two months. 81 persons helped him, saved him. Over the last three days, the Norway 75 team paddled from Tromsø in towards the Overlingen. And it was this route that Jan Bowser in 1943 would have been rowed down on his continued escape to the Swedish frontier. And when he got dropped off at the end of this fjord at a place called Lingsider, he was given a pair of skis and he proceeded to ski up into the mountains, the fairly formidable Lingen Alps just over here. It was up in those Alps that he was avalanched, snow blind, and basically crawled on his hands and knees down into a village called Furaflatten. And it was here that he met the Grumble family. He was in a very, very bad condition. His, um, it was his last step because he was after they uh, had started to rescue him, they have to carry him to the barn and uh, he was not able to walk from this, this place. He, he was helpless nearby. That's uh, unbelievable, unbelievable that he could survive what he survived. His journey was uh, in that direction on the Schleich and then down to the sea and across the fjord to the Hotel Savoy. They do what they have to do. He came here as a Norwegian soldier and it was, a, it was their duty. Their, they have to do it. Upon being taken from Thurafarten, which was over there underneath the clouds by the Grumble family and rode across over to the other side of the fjord to the Hotel Savoy, Jan Bowser was left there for about five days where he suffered from frostbite and he suffered from severe gangrene. He had to chop off several of his toes and he couldn't get the support he needed because of the adverse weather. The Grumble family then rode back across. They met up with Jan with a homemade sledge and four of them pulled him up the side of the fjord and they left him up there to be met by people from Mandalen, but due to severe weather, they couldn't actually make it to find Jan. And it was after about three weeks of a harrowing experience that Jan was finally picked up, taken to Mandalen, and then transported along the reindeer routes over to Sweden. And upon leaving Sweden, he made it back to the UK where he trained several other SOE operatives. And it was after the war that he came back to this area, to his route, and he actually found and thanked the people that helped him all along his epic escape and evasion.